is horrible that you guys are aware that th th this trespassing garbage and all the bogus charges, you know, you guys know about the violence. On the ground. What? Get on the ground. There's been complaints filed with the Civil Rights Commission board. They completely let this guy go. He drove away, actually, clearly drunk. But uh, Marion Police Department, man, uh, from stories that I've been hearing from my guy and the looks that I've been getting from this guy, <laughs> as soon as he starts speaking, he looked me in my face like I've done something wrong and I have nothing to do with what this man has to speak on. But he looked me right in my face. Death stare, six, seven seconds alone, made me uncomfortable. <laughs> Hey everybody, thanks so much for tuning in. This city council meeting occurred on February 8th, 2024 at the Marion, Iowa City Hall. Thanks for tuning in everybody. Here we go. Public forum, which is a time set aside for uh, comments from members of the public. Just a reminder of uh, the rules. Uh, they're stated on the screen. And uh, we ask that you please limit your comments to five minutes and that you also complete a yellow card to allow for uh, for the for the pub, for the minutes as also and also to allow for uh, follow up that may be needed. Also, uh, we ask that you not approach the dais, but turn any um, materials you want to submit to the council, please hand those to the clerk. Anyone here to address council, please come forward. Hello, everybody. Uh, with all due respect, I'll be exercising my Fourth Amendment right under the United States Constitution. I'm here to talk to you guys about a letter that I got from Chief Kitzmiller of the Marion Isle Police Department sitting right there. The date on this letter is December 8th, 2022. The date of the meeting is December 1st, 2022, and on December 27th, 2023, I um, had a conversation with Phil Fort, Lieutenant Phil Fort, and I actually handed him this letter trying to get to the bottom of what's really going on here. Um, number one, I talked about um, an officer being dishonest and being racist. On number two, I talked about more racism. Number three, I talked about racism too. Um, on number four, it talked about license plates and number five, um, the money they stole in a records request. Now, I didn't just talk about the racism. I, I brought in a television with um, an unredacted body camera straight from the Lynn County Attorney's Office. Like it wasn't edited. And I literally showed Chief Kitzmiller, this is what your officers are doing on the street. And while I don't have time to talk about all these, I'm going to talk about number four in a little more detail due to time constraints. Um, on December 1st, I told Mike Kitzmiller after the meeting that the narrative he gave me is just not true. You know, he, he basically brushed it off and I reported two license plates of police violating the law. Months later, I filed a complaint about uh, number 88, uh, car 88, and it, it just shows that the narrative that Kitzmiller is putting on the table it's either true or it's false. It's very simple. Like, you know, these cops are either driving with expired tags or they're not. And the fact that he's lying about not just a couple things, but every single thing in this letter, it makes you wonder what is the motivation for the lies? Like you're, you're clearly trying to deceive me. And it shows that he's trying to cover up what the Marion Police Department does. Another thing that I'm going to be submitting to you guys today, this paper, um, it's a little more clear um, when it's on a screen. So th this this photo is of um, Dan Veneville with two black eyes. He uh, he is actually a uh, fully disabled elderly man, and it's really sad to see somebody with two black eyes. And while Michael Kitzmiller did not throw the punch with his hand, it was a trespass right here in this city hall. It was malicious prosecution and bogus charges right here in the city hall, right from the Marion Iowa Police Department. And when Dan went to court to support his son against the bogus charges, Dan not only walked out of there with two black eyes from the Lynn County Sheriff's Department, but he also did 12 days in jail with no warning, had no idea. 
you know, it was condemned and another bogus charge. And when it got out of jail, they just dropped the charges. So there's no conversation about why did he do 12 days in jail? Why does he have two black eyes? There's no conversation. And the, the, the violence guys, you know, take a look at this picture. You know, it, it, it's just so horrible to see a, a young police officer in his 20s or 30s going after a fully disabled man. You know, it, it's almost like the type of like going after somebody in a wheelchair, you know, like that that's just bad karma, you know, and it, it's just horrible that you guys are aware that th th this trespassing garbage and all the bogus charges, you know, you guys know about the violence. Hey, everybody. We're going to take a quick pause and I'm going to show you guys the violence that I'm talking about. And then we're going to go back to the city hall meeting. The violence I'm talking about happened on February 14th, 2022, when the Marion, Iowa Police Department violently arrested Casey Van Neville inside his own home with no warrant. This is just one example of many beatdowns that have either came directly or indirectly from the Marion, Iowa Police Department. Hey! Step out here! Hey! Dude! Step out dude. here! Dude! Step out here! Fuck! Dude! On the ground! What's up? Fuck! Hey! You're under arrest! What now get the on the ground! What the fuck is going on? Get on the ground! What's get on the so ground! What the fuck is going on? You're under arrest! You know the way you destroy people's lives, and you have the ability to clean up this department. You have an ability to meet with me or somebody else and go over these body cams from Blaine County Attorney's Office. This has been going on for years, guys, and it's it's not going to stop. You know, news is going to start reporting on it over and over again. I've, I've been over to lawsuits. You guys have seen them. Um, you just really need to clean up the corruption in the Marinot Police Department. Thank you for your time today. Thank you. Anyone else here to address council, please come forward. Thank you all for your time. Thank you for being active city council members and um, sincerely. You guys are doing you guys are doing the work for our town and our community um my name is nash randall brown and i speak for myself i represent a nonprofit um legal assistance with public learning commitment <clears throat> and before i start rambling i'd like to just give a shout out to the parks and rec guy um brent i was just over at starry park seeing what you guys did over there with uh with that soccer um, enclosure and I just thought that was really cool so thank you for that um, <clears throat> so I'm here and I'm speaking on a legal nonprofit and it's um, <clears throat> it's a new one and what brought me here and what brought me to devote my time and energy into this is um, had to do with a divorce and it was a bad divorce <clears throat> there was um, a magistrate involved named Kristen Lisa Deniger. She is part of our sixth district. And I uh, had the unfortunate opportunity of meeting her at the in-laws house in 2019. And then in 2020, I get divorced. In 2019, I was introduced to her by the mother-in-law as this is my longtime friend. And then they made a joke stating better not screw up or we'll have your ass unfortunately me and my wife did not be able to make amends and we got a divorce and that started two days after the derecho and while she abandoned the property me and my nine-year-old daughter were forced to leave our house and i don't know if you guys remember the derecho there wasn't many places to rent or to uh stay in Without anywhere to go, I thought the only place to protect my daughter would be to take her back to our abandoned property. And upon our return, I got arrested. And I got arrested over and over again for trying to save my company, for trying to get personal belongings for my daughter and for myself. And every warrant was issued by this magistrate. <clears throat> 
to say she's mentally unfit is an understatement and she's still sitting magistrate to this day. There's been complaints filed with the Civil Rights Commission Board, the Judicial Qualifications Commission Board, and nobody seems to care. Um, so I wanna kind of talk about preclusion and preclusion is the action of preventing something from happening. Um, the synonyms of preclusion is impediment and inhibitor, just to name a couple. Um, so to prevent future incidents from happening with this mentally unstable magistrate, um, I believe that we need to take action. The proof is in the phone records for if anybody's interested, if any one of our city council members has subpoena power. Um, U.S. Cellular is where we can find the records and the connection between the mother-in-law and our sitting magistrate, Kristen Deniger. To say the least, what I've lost is, is, um, is a lot. I lost uh, the relationship with my kids. I lost my company that I've owned and operated for seven years. I lost, <clears throat> I lost my reputation. And I lost the last three years of my life. The only thing I could do was to leave Iowa to just get some control over the situation. And that's what I did. Um, and then I was able to come back just recently in June. And of course I get arrested, thrown in jail for three months. And now all these charges are getting dismissed and then overturned in our appellate court. <clears throat> so the motive is there and that's what brings me here to speak with you guys. That's what brings me to be funding, founding this uh, nonprofit. And, um, you know, with everything taken away, you know, I lost a lot of self-worth having my family and my kids and my company was my self-worth. So this is how I regained my self-worth and my dignity. And um, I believe my time is up. Thank you for listening. Anyone else here to address council, please come forward. Please state your name and address. Uh, my name is Trey. Uh, I do want to exercise my uh, Fourth Amendment right. I do not want to give my address. Okay. Uh, I just want to speak real quick about uh, a few things. I am uh, a uh, gun rights activist, and uh, I do open carry demonstrations um, around the Cedar Rapids, Marion area. Uh, I also go uh, out of state where it is legal to do these things, uh, Wisconsin, Texas, and uh, Oklahoma. I've been to all of those places. Uh, I started doing this about five and a half years ago. And uh, when I first got out here doing this um, open carry demonstrations, where I would have uh, AR-15, uh, extra magazines, pistol on my side, bulletproof vest, the whole get up. Uh, I, I started doing this to show people that the hero likes that gun too. Uh, and uh, protectors uh, see value in that firearm. And uh, we can't be demonized uh, by the things that we choose to use to protect the only life that we do have. Um, and uh, I got out here in Cedar Rapids uh, early 2000, this was like May 2020, I believe. And I was approached by Cedar Rapids Police Department. Uh, they told me right away that I did not have to identify myself but they would appreciate some cooperation because they got some calls and they wanted to know who I was. So since they gave me um, an out up front by saying that I did not have to identify myself, I identified myself just to play fair. And I was new to the whole thing. So I wanted to diffuse any potential of a conflict. And uh, so I gave my ID up. Um, later that same year, uh, late summer, early fall, I did an open carry demonstration here in Marion, Iowa, where I was approached by uh, three officers, uh, I cannot pronounce his name, you spell it D-J-E-R-F, uh, uh, badge number, what was that badge number, 172, and also Officer Chapman, badge number 208, and Officer, I don't know how to pronounce that, H-O-T-S, HOTS, um, and whatever badge number for that officer is, 190. Uh, they approached me uh, requesting identification 
And uh, I told them that I didn't have to do that, but if they were going to force me to, I would like to hear the consequences of me refusing verbally to ID. And if the consequences were scary, then I would ID them because I didn't want any trouble. They proceeded to tell me that I would be arrested, taken down to the station, and uh, I would be somehow identified. Uh, and once I was identified and cleared, that I would be free to go. Uh, so when I heard that, I didn't want any troubles. I didn't want anyone putting their hands on me. So. I gave up my ID. Both of these examples uh, that I'm giving you now uh, are on camera. Uh, after that, I did an open carry demonstration. This is about a year and a half ago in Dubuque, Iowa, uh, the most popular video on my YouTube channel where uh, I was approached by two officers, asked the ID, and I refused. And they allowed me to verbally refuse when they didn't have anything to accuse me of. And uh, they let me go. So I have these examples of how uh, two different police departments in Iowa granted me the rights without threat that I have uh, to refuse ID. Marion Police Department did not do that. And in the meantime, while they're forcing me to ID myself, what we're dealing with here is my life in their hands. That if I did not back down, that would have gotten bad. But for what reason? Two other police departments on camera told me that I did not have to ID myself. So if this is gonna be uh, uh, an issue, uh, with Marion Police Department uh, constantly fumbling how it is that they handle something like the Second Amendment, which I thought you guys took an oath uh, to protect. Um, I will find out if, if, if someone is willing to cross that line because I will continue to do these open carry demonstrations uh, everywhere that I go. Um, just uh, September, just this past year, uh, a drunk guy approached me and my cousin doing an open carry demonstration here in, in Marion. And the police that showed up actually allowed this drunk guy to cause a problem. They asked him to remove himself. They told me and my cousin that we weren't doing anything illegal, that we were free to stay there. The whole time avoiding the fact that this guy was obviously drunk, trained officers should recognize this. I recognized it. They didn't check. I called for a sobriety test or someone to examine this guy to be sure that he wasn't drunk multiple times on camera nothing happened. Once again, my life is in the hands of foolish people mishandling how this is supposed to go the whole time. I'm the only good guy on the scene. They completely let this guy go. He drove away, actually, clearly drunk. And I, I did not get the names of those officers uh, that did that. I was completely engulfed in my YouTube streaming, and uh, I let that one slip away. But uh, Marion Police Department, man, uh, from stories that I've been hearing from my guy and the looks that I've been getting from this guy, <laughs> as soon as he starts speaking, he looked me in my face like I've done something wrong and I have nothing to do with what this man has to speak on. But he looked me right in my face. Death stare. Six, seven seconds alone. Made me uncomfortable. I don't know what's going on here, but uh, come on, man. Uh, you guys took that oath and you appear to be serious when you did that. So be serious about it when you're dealing with people, because I will be out. Soliciting hugs from the public while I'm armed to show you guys that good guys like that gun too, okay? Thank you. Anyone else address council? Okay, we'll close this part of the meeting. Uh, I would just like to ask for some clarification from the staff. There were a couple, at least a couple of the speakers referred to um, other uh, entities or, or law enforcement entities that that were not related to the city of Marion. Um, yes, that's correct. The Lynn County Sheriff provides security at the Lynn County Courthouse. It is a county facility. And so we do not actually have any authority over the Lynn County Sheriff's Office. That would be a county matter. The same thing is true. We don't have any authority over any of the judges or magistrates. Kristen Deniger is not a magistrate in this county. She's in Jones County. So we would not have any authority over that either. Thank you for that clarification. Okay, with that, we'll uh, proceed to any council comments. Mayor. Oh, oh yes, I'm I sorry. I apologize. We did receive a comment from a person who wishes to remain anonymous. Um, they wrote about concerns with the public forum rules. The email was sent to you guys in advance of the meeting. Okay, yep. Thank you for that. Okay, with that, we'll go to council comments. Hey, everybody. Thanks so much for staying to the end of the video. 
Previously, Flex Your Freedoms was censored by Mayor Nicholas Abalasi when speaking in a city council meeting. This is another example, guys, of censorship by the city of Marion. The city of Marion wants you to pay them every time you buy a gallon of gas, every time you buy food at a local drive through every time you pay a ticket at one of their cameras throughout the cities. You're paying these people involuntarily. And when we people want to speak out, we are always censored by the city of Marion. And at BCNN and other places, we are all about giving a voice to people who do not have a voice. So the person that wrote this comment was censored. Their, their thoughts and their opinions were suppressed by the city of Marion. So right now, I'm going to give you guys the full entire comment and exactly what was said. Number one, while it is no longer phrased as a demand, this insistent insistence that one surrender their identity still a course of tactic that demands to be shamed. Not to mention the ridiculous invasion of privacy required in order to submit a comment such as this. If you're going to assist on the surrender of this information, see the Fourth Amendment of the United States Constitution. I must insist that a disclaimer be added informing the people that this is an option is not is completely voluntary. Abandon this perception of greater authority, or buy a dictionary and read it. Specifically, if you're going to push for etiquette, this definition of a DS is as follows. A raised service upon which one may stand while speaking in a formal matter. It is meant by definition for it, the person speaking. It is not, not a place for you to set your throne. Number four, address the council as. No, a title is not who you are. It is a display of your responsibility. In this case, your duty. It is an expectation of your position to accept criticisms in all their forms within the bounds of the law i.e. threats of violence by one which the capa capacity to follow through. To this, my comment is thus, your pomobius egocentrism is showing. Speaker should. In a perfect world, this may be the case. But we as humans are far from perfect. Again, it is the duty of your station to accept that it may not always be this way. To be more specific, you do not possess the authority to compel or restrict speech of any kind. See the First Amendment of the United States Constitution. Speaker should. C.6. Repeat.6. No speaker may. Again, outside of actual and already existing violations of law, you cannot enforce this. C.6 again. Repeat.6 again. Avoid repeating comments. You cannot compel or restrict speech. Get over it. If one or 100 people have grievances of the exact same issue, it is still your responsibility to listen to it and accept those grievances. C.6 and repeat again. Rule 10, the whole thing. Disruptions are caused almost exclusively by the actions taken that are already outside the bounds of law much like what you've done with these meetings. They are therefore not subject to your own or council collective opinion. Again, if this were a perfect world, this would be nice. However, your own actions prove that this world does not contain those who otherwise act in what is described as corrupt ways. Addition, fix this so that the next time I can participate and be subject to your willing by submitting my comment for your review before a decision is made to display it or not. You actively and clearly work against both the idea of individual security as well as the idea of free speech. I hope to see this change. So this is a clear example, guys, of how the city of Marion will censor people. They have more than one way of doing it, but they're always trying to collect all the money they can and never hear from the people who are paying for their paychecks, their building, and everything inside that city hall. Thanks so much for tuning in, guys. This has been BCNN, Real News Only.